Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, class to our course uh, mechanical behavior of materials. So in the last uh, lecture, we completed the topic uh, of uh, precipitation strengthening and uh, dispersion hardening. So today uh, we'll start talking about solid solution strengthening, which is uh, one of the another uh, type of mechanisms. Okay. So we'll talk about solid solution strengthening okay so now uh, if you remember when we were talking about uh, aluminum four percent copper uh, system uh, in precipitation strengthening right so we had this alpha phase if you remember the phase diagram we had this alpha phase which was single phase right okay and if you talk about aluminum 4% copper, this alpha phase is actually a solid solution. Of copper in aluminum. Okay, we had discussed this. Okay, so you have copper, which is solute and aluminum is solvent here okay so alpha phase is a solid solution now because of the presence of copper which is a solute the dislocation dislocation movement is going to be restricted okay and because of that you are going to see some amount of strengthening. And since it is happening because of the formation of solid solution, the whole phenomena is called solid solution strengthening. Again, remember alpha is a solid solution okay, of copper in aluminum. Now copper is restricting the movement of dislocation. And that's why this whole phenomena, the whole concept is called solid solution strengthening. Okay, so strengthening due to the addition of solute atoms, right? This is called solid solution strengthening. Okay, now if you remember the aging curve of uh, aluminum four weight percent copper, I am using this example because we have discussed this before. Okay, and if I draw the aging curve, so you have hardness here and then aging time. on the x-axis, right? And if you remember the curve looked like something like this. Okay. And at that time, I mentioned that this particular point, which corresponds to time t equal to zero, the strengthening you're getting from the alloy, the contribution is coming from solid solution strengthening. Obviously you're going to have some lattice resistance right, in the matrix, but main contribution will be coming from solid solution strengthening. So whatever hardness here, say if I say hardness as H0, the contribution towards H0 will be coming from solid solution strengthening. So some contribution of 
of solid solution strengthening towards h not okay and as you increase the aging time here so all these hardness in this range you have a contribution also from precipitates isn't it so at time t equal to 0 if you remember the condition was s quench condition so you had solid uh, super saturated solid solution right so there you have a contribution from solid solution strengthening because you have lots of solutes because you have quenched it isn't it and as soon as you start aging it precipitates form and then they will contribute towards precipitation strengthening okay so realize the difference between solid solution strengthening and precipitation strengthening in precipitation strengthening you have contribution from precipitates okay and in solid solution strengthening you have contribution from the solutes present in the solid solution now again realize that the solid solution the crystal structure of the solvent remains same so it doesn't change right like in aluminum four percent proper the alpha phase is also fcc like aluminum okay but in precipitates, whenever we form precipitates like beta phase can have a different crystal structure than alpha. Okay, so Al2Cu, the precipitate you form in aluminum 4% proper, the equilibrium precipitate, the crystal structure is not FCC. Okay, so crystal structure of the precipitates can change. That is the difference, one of the differences between the solute and the precipitate. Solute is an atom. Okay, and precipitates is a phase, phase. So there is a difference. Okay, and remember in aging term at time t equal to zero, you see a contribution from solid solution strengthening because you have not formed any precipitate yet. And after that, you start seeing the contribution from precipitates and strengthening work. Okay. Now some of the examples, common examples for uh, solid solution. You know these example already. So brass, right? Then you have copper, nickel, and steel also, right? Carbon, carbon atom is a solute atom in iron. So steel. So you have lots of example where you can see solid solution strengthening. Okay. So this is the difference between solid solution strengthening and precipitation strengthening. So let's understand how the properties of the material changes when we add more number of solutes. Okay. So if I plot stress versus strain, So let's see, we have three plots. The first one is for pure metal. So this is for say pure metal. Okay, now we are adding solute. So you can have another plot going to look something like this okay so this is a solute of concentration c1 okay now let's draw another one
okay so you have solute of concentration of c2 okay so you can clearly see the difference between pure metal solute of concentration c1 and c2 where say concentration is increasing in this direction okay so c2 is higher than c1 concentration and what you see here that as you increase the solute concentration the strength increases and ductility slightly decreases okay you can clearly see here. so this is your tensile strength here okay somewhere here say okay so strength of the pure metal is the lowest and as you start adding solutes you are going to get contribution from solute solution strengthening this solute atoms are going to restrict the movement of dislocations okay and thereby you are going to see the increment in the strength okay so what you can write here is that solid solution offers greater resistance to the dislocation motion then pure crystals okay you can see a pure crystal right so this is your pure, pure crystal in the red color here so pure metal it has lower strength than the other two solute solutions where one contain solute of c1 another one c2 now if i plot another plot where you are varying the concentration so let's see something like this so all these are qualitative huh? qualitative means schematic i'm drawing and for different metals uh, for different uh, alloy system you are going to see different strength of or magnitude of strengthening okay? so you have say a was your pure metal and then you are adding b so weight percent of b here Okay. And here, say I am drawing tensile strength. And here we have elongation. So, if we see the above plot here, we can conclude that if you increase the concentration, if you go from C1 to C2 here, in this direction you are going to decrease the elongation and increase the strength right and pure metal is the lowest in terms of strength so if i draw now so this becomes your pure metal here pure a now we are adding b so your strength is going to increase something like this okay. the trend line can be different for different alloy system but it is going to increase so say for uh, different concentration of b you are going to obtain different tensile strength something like this similarly uh, for pure a you are going to have a higher elongation and it is going to decrease as you increase the concentration of solute okay so overall what you see uh, here that uh, there is a change in tensile strength as well as elongation and this is happening because of solute solution strengthening okay so your strength is going to enhance because of the presence of solute atoms because they are going to restrict the movement of dislocations again i am reiterating the whole crux of this, this strengthening mechanism is that you have to somehow restrict the movement of the dislocation okay now let's uh, talk uh, about solute solution 
very quickly you already know about solid solution so solid solution so there are two types one is your uh, substitutional solid solution and another one is interstitial solid solution okay so in substitutional solid solution you are going to replace the solvent atoms by solute atoms right so solute atoms replaces replace solvent atoms and in interstitial solute atoms are going to occupy the interstitial positions or voids solute atoms will occupy interstitial positions ऐसे वॉइड्स ओके सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन substitutional solid solution and interstitial solid solution and if you again uh, let's talk about aluminum 4% copper that is your substitutional solid solution but if we talk, talk about steel that becomes interstitial solid solution of carbon in iron because carbon grows in in the interstitials okay in the iron lattice and if you just uh, draw a very quick diagram of uh, these two so if i have say atom a okay so i am drawing by hand so you know the size of uh, all these atoms are not similar but again just learn the concepts suppose you have let me draw another one for interstitial okay so okay so these are your say lattice of uh, a so you have a atoms here so the black one here is a atom so a atom okay now if it is substitutional what we are going to do we are going to replace some of the a atoms with say b atoms something like this okay so this becomes your b atom so this is the case of substitutional solid solution where b atoms which is a solute is going to replace the a atoms so here this is your solute and this is your a is your solvent now if the same situation is there with uh, the interstitial let's a atom is same color and b atom is same color so i can place here b atom something like this okay so what is happening here b atoms as a solute they are going to sit into the interstitials okay they are voids interstitial voids so they are going to sit there so this is the case of interstitial solid solution
okay and here this one is your substitutional solid solution and the example i already mentioned for substitutional solid solution you have say copper in nickel okay and in the stitchel solid solution the example steel that is carbon in iron so carbon is your solute atom iron is your solvent and copper here is your solute atom and nickel is your uh, solvent okay so here i have not uh, shown you any strain in the lattice and we are going to learn eventually that whenever you add solute atoms you are going to see a strain in the lattice okay so depending upon the size you are going to see strain in the lattice we will dis discuss it for, for now uh, for now i have just uh, neglected the strains here so you are not going to see any strain in the lattice now let's talk about something called distortion so if you see here right depending upon the size of the b atoms you can imagine right that there will be distortion in the lattice okay so if the size of this b atoms here right is large then you are going to see expansion in the lattice you can force it isn't it similarly the size atom here in the substitutional case okay if it is smaller and larger there is going to be distortion in the lattice so let's talk about distortion in the lattice due to cell solute atoms okay so now let me again draw a nice uh, lattice with no distortion again all these atoms should be of same size i just draw one more line one more row of atoms okay so this is your solvent and now let's put interstitial atoms at uh, say this position here let me mark it using black so at this position we are going to put say interstitial atom and now since it interstitial because of the interstitial atom you are going to see distortion in the lattice okay so i have now interstitial atom here and now let's draw the same atoms what we had before so you are going to see something like this okay so something like this so what you see that there is a distortion in the lattice okay around this region right 
if you see here i can draw a straight line like this right but here you are seeing a distortion as soon as you reach uh, around the interstitial atom right so there is expansion in the lattice okay now this is interstitial so i have shown here in the schematic here at the bottom you can see unit cells right so this is fcc fate center cubic you know this and then this is bcc okay and you can see in fcc both uh, tetrahedral as well as octahedral voids so let me change the color okay so here this one this blue one is your octahedral voids okay and then you can see a tetrahedron in the red color here isn't it this guy in the red color so this one okay so this is a tetrahedron so there is a void in the tetrahedron we call it tetrahedral void so this is for fcc right so imagine that you have this blue atom so this blue atom if i mark on the top a right and we are talking about this black atoms which is a solute say black atom is here ba okay and blue atom is a so imagine that in fcc uh, lattice you uh, the face center atoms are also a as well as the corners are a that is how fcc is uh, made right so the b atoms which is in black color they are going to sit either in tetrahedral void or tetra uh, uh, octahedral void so this is either it is going to sit in octahedral here or in the tetrahedral void okay now in bcc also you can see one tetrahedron here see the dotted line so you can see a tetrahedron so there is a void in bcc also okay so the interstitial atom which is b in this case can go and sit in the interstitial void which is tetrahedron void here also okay so whether it is bcc or fcc you are going to have some void some interstitial positions okay and the solute atoms are going to sit in those octahedral or tetrahedral voids and since this is sitting in octahedral or tetrahedral void the distortion what you see here on the top so this type of distortion is going to be non symmetrical in nature okay that means interstitial solute atoms have a non spherical distortion field okay tetragonal or octahedral okay so the distortion you see is non spherical type okay because it is sitting in either tetragonal position or octahedral position okay so this is the case of interstitial solid solution okay so we have interstitial solid atom so let me write here so this is the case of interstitial solid solution now if we come to uh, substitutional solid solution let's see what happens substitutional solid solution so let me quickly draw uh, the atoms for understanding so i will have a atoms 
Okay, so I'm not drawing again the uh, perfect lattice. So let's quickly draw, if you have a substitutional atom, which is smaller in size and substitutional atom, which is larger in size. Okay. So what happens if the substitutional atoms is smaller in size? So you're going to see something like this, the structure. And then this line of atoms will be sitting here. Something like this. Okay. Okay, something like this. So what you see that this is here in this region, you have somewhat compressed the lattice, isn't it? So you have somewhat compressed compared to your previous lattice. Okay, if you have uh, uh, no solute atom present. Okay. Now, if I add a larger substitutional atom, so if you see here, if I start adding, uh, you know, larger substitutional atoms anywhere in this uh, A here, right, you are going to see expansion in the lattice. So you can imagine, right, if you have a smaller substitutional atom, you are going to have contraction in the lattice. And if you have a larger uh, solute atom, you are going to expand the lattice, isn't it? So here we are going to see expansion. So it is going to be something like this. Okay. And then you're going to have another set of atoms here. And then actually I have to make uh, much larger in size. So let me change, make it much larger. Okay. So now this guy here will move up, it will be something like this, okay, and this atom will also move down, okay, and then you have this situation. Okay, so what you see here? that there is a expansion in the lattice here. Okay, so this is your larger solute atom, larger substitutional atom, and this is smaller substitutional atom. Okay, so in both the cases, you see strain in the lattice, but in one case, there is a contraction, in another one, there is expansion of the lattice, right? 
So, and if you see, if you imagine it, this is going to be completely spherical distortion, right? Compared to the interstitial uh, solid solution where it was non-spherical because the solute atoms were sitting in the tetrahedral or octahedral voids, okay? So in substitutional solid solution, substitutional atoms have spherical distortion field. Okay, so it will lead to spherical distortion. And if you see here, it is non-spherical, huh? interstitial. So this is the difference between the strain associated with substitutional uh, atoms and interstitial atom. In substitutional atom, you have a spherical distortion. In interstitial atom, you have non-spherical distortion. And you know, you are going to learn later that since the nature of distortion is different in interstitial and substitutional atoms, the interaction with dislocations, the way they are interacting with dislocations, they are also going to be different for substitutional solid solution and interstitial solid solutions. Okay, so I'll stop now and we'll learn more uh, about substitutional solution in the next lecture. Thank you.